Hi everyone, welcome to a new, brand new season of Since My Mom Asked Me About Rome. This time we're going, season number two, we're going to change the format. Instead of questions, there's questions going to be asked at the end of each section. So for this section, we're going to go all the way back to, literally all the way back to ancient Roman legend. To start going back all the way to the Trojan War. And if you're thinking of, if you're thinking of something that starts with T and other, get your mind out of the gutter. <laughs> yeah. So moving on. So we're gonna go back to the Trojan War. And if anyone know, and if anyone knows the Trojan War, it's of course the Greeks against the Trojans, because because Prince Paris of Troy decided to get uh, get a little handsy with Helen, who is also wife of the king of Sparta, Menelaus. Hmm. I've looked it up later yes Menelaus so and because of that he went to Menelaus went to his brother Amenon and so and they brought together all of all of Greece to fight to reclaim to reclaim Helen for Menelaus but also to to gain the Troy gain the city of Troy for for Agamemnon so the fleet of course was was as ancient as Portrayed by Homer's, you know the Greek art, the Greek author who wrote who wrote about the war, who wrote about who wrote that legend was huge, and so year, so for a long time the Greeks and the Trojans were fighting until the end of the war where the Greeks managed to do some smashing. I'm sorry, there there's a lot of puns there. Did a lot of smashing, and so the Troy sword of Troy was given to Aeneid, and that's where this book comes in later on, or at least written by. Written by the this Roman historian Virgil, who's trying to give legitimacy to Augustus's regime late, much, much later, which will be much later. Aeneas, Aeneas was a Trojan prince, so and to save his people, he would, had to leave the, leave the city. And according to Aeneas, which is of course based off of the continuation of the Iliad, he goes through many trials and tribulations, and of course. Then he also had to deal with the gods who, of course, as a, with every squabbling family, has their own issues with each other, mostly between the elder gods. After a very, very long voyage to stretching from shipwreck every five minutes, to another shipwreck every five minutes, and to another shipwreck every five minutes, in this book there's a lot of shipwrecks, which is really, really annoying, and honestly really dumb, but really funny at the same time. He lands, Aeneas and his people land in Africa. And who do they meet in Africa? Dido. And who's Dido the queen of? Carthage. And because there's a little, little, little bit going on here between the gods of what of what Aeneas is going to do, I think Jupiter? Yes, Jupiter, who is Zeus. Try to get, try to, wait. Sorry, it's easy to lose track of all the gods. So many gods. One of the, one of the gods, not Jupiter, I think, tried to get Aeneas to get all, uh, get all levied up in a handsy with Dido, who's the queen of Carthage. And it worked. They got in a cave and did things. Yeah, leave that to imagination. Leave that to your imagination. Imagination. But in not too many words, was reminded of his destiny, which was to found a city in the, on the Tiber in Italy. Of course, what's interesting that not very many people heard of Italy right, at the moment, because pretty much all, pretty much the world was Greece. And Anatolia, which is Asia Minor, and that that will get on. That one will get on with later on, later on, like later on down the road when all the fun stuff happens. Of course, depends. But so Aeneas, sadly, in the process, also lost his father, Dido. But he had, but back on track, Aeneas had to leave Dido, who did did not like the fact that she gave her love. To him, and because of that, she declared the ever, never-ending in the anger of Carthage, which will play out la later on in the Rep during the time of the Republic, during the Carthaginian, the war with the Punic Wars. But and sadly, as she was declaring the never die, the undying and anger of Carthage, she threw herself on the funeral onto the fire, onto a fire, a prior, a fire. Hey, that rhymes. That's cool. A prior, a fire prior, prior fire, as he was leaving. So, 
he made he made it to Italy and he founded the city founded a city not not Rome that's gonna be later on he founded the city of Bologna which would be the Alban Hills in central Italy yeah close by I'll have a map up at some point and from there he and his descendants will rule for the next couple hundred years until we get to the legendary founder legendary founder and his twin brother Romulus, the legendary founder Romulus and and his twin brother Remus that we'll cover in a different video so I hope you enjoy this one and this and just and what's going to be in the and how this is going to work is that in each section so this section is going to be from what I just talked about Aeneas then right then Romulus and Remus well they'll both be in the same video because Romulus is first king of Rome then he had the next set next the other six kings of Rome followed by three sections of the Roman Republic then a question then also at the end of the seven kings and at the end of the Republic my mom is going to ask a question that different time period then once we reach the Empire then it's going to be interesting to do that one because that's going to be covering more than roughly 1100 years of imperial history stretching from the from Caesar Augustus all the way to fall of the empire in the west at 476 plus until the fall of the Roman Empire in the east and 1453 with Emperor Constantine XI. So I hope everyone enjoyed this video and honestly I'm excited. And I hope everyone's gonna love it. And and, do, and also, don't hesitate to ask any questions on any video I listen to or watch. Roman Victor.